Hello, I am Suzuki. So this is afternoon session that we are having, and uh, I would like to talk to you about the status of our R&D project related to fuel debris which we bought, and Mr. Miyamoto will be uh, covering the. So from number one to number three units, as mentioned by Mr. Masuda, one, two, three, and four. Of course, the uh, situation is different and varies from one unit to another. Uh, this is a mid to long term uh, roadmap. And already in November, our uh, first batch of uh, fuel have been removed, and this is a phase two. The period up to the commencement of the retrieval of the debris. And maybe uh, during the first half of 2020, at the earliest, uh, it can be done. That is uh, where we are. Now about the debris retrieval image. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, fuels uh, can be uh, retrieved with uh, water being filled in. That is the uh, safest in terms of the exposure. And also, technology for investigations and repairing method for filling the PCB with water has been conducted. And uh, IFI is being conducted. So this is the difference between the TMI and Fukushima. For the uh, Fukushima is different from the TMI. We had a hydrogen explosion which damaged one, three, and four units building, water boundary, fuel debris location. It came out of the RP and went to RPB from the containment vessel. And TMI was a PWR where they uh, control board will be inserted from top, but uh, Fukushima is different. Uh, the control road uh, will to go in uh, from the bottom. So there is a debris remaining at the bottom of the vessel, vessel which makes the situation very uh, different, as we heard from Mr. Barrett. After the uh, retrieval of the fuel, of course, one must think about uh, a further idea and uh, Request for proposal and uh, information has been made, and uh, we are studying the overseas cases. This is a flow of R&D. So there is a spent fuel pool from which uh, fuel needs to be retrieved. So this is a pool from which a fuel uh, will be uh, taken out and will be maintained for temporary time and uh, we have to assure safety. I would like to think about uh, how the safety can be uh, assured. And also R&D is underway and uh, the decontamination is something that uh, I would like to cover, which is an uh, important point. And also within the containment vessel, upper part and lower part, uh, damage assessment has to be made and uh, in accordance with assessment, uh, repairing should be done. So what is the situation of the fuel they believe within the reactor? What is the exact location, which is a key? In order to find out that, uh, inner survey will be made by the containment vessel and the pressurized vessel, which has already started. And also, the detection of the debris has to be done in a simplified way, facilitate the ease uh, of uh, looking inside the reactor and the instrument will be used and which will be starting from this year. So what is the characteristics of the debris? It is an uh, important point. So assess it should be assessed and also uh, how to make uh, disposal of uh, debris need to be studied. So of course after the removal of uh, debris it needs to be stored somewhere. So how to store them and how to transport them is under study. So this will be done with the water being filled. But in our current project, under the water uh, filling setting, the fuel is to be removed. But uh, it can be maybe uh, alternatively taken out from the air without water. So the other uh, examination on the alternative way has started to be examined. And the disposal of the waste will be covered by my subsequent speaker. So that is a major flow. And one more important point I need to cite. 
uh, is to assure the stability on the site. Let's say that uh, uh, pressurized vessel and good emitted vessel has to be kept safe, but because of the presence of the ocean water, a corrosion should, could take place and so forth, so that the preventive measures against the corrosion need to be taken, which is important, and also criticality need to be prevented as well. So in feeding the water, uh, this process uh, is very important. And of course, uh, debris uh, criticality uh, control uh, has to be performed well. So for the spent fuel and the retrieval of the fuel and debris and to secure the stability, and uh, at the end I would like to really talk about retrieval of the fuel and debris. So this is the project relevant. Firstly, the research and development related to removal of fuel from spent fuel. Let's talk about long-term safety evaluation of the fuel assembly. So there is a unique characteristics pertaining to the uh, spent fuel pool and so forth. When the fuel was taken out from number four, it was uh, confirmed by TEPCO. So there is an ocean water and the debris involved. And what happened to the fuel assembly, which is stored in the common pool? Is it really the case that uh, long-term safety and integrity is secured or not? And research is being conducted on that. So concretely speaking, this is a fuel assembly. And there are certain things that need to be covered, the structural integrity, handle, and uh, upper tie plate, and fastening of tie rod bolts, and for the a lower part uh, tie plate need to be secured. And this is a cladding material and uh, effect of evaluation caused by fish and products need to be performed. This is the result of saying thus far. For example, in case of number four fuel, the debris have been mixed. And based on that, at a hot lab, the immersion test have been conducted. This is the chlorine concentration. With the passage of the time, accordingly, this is the sodium, chlorine, and Cl minus, and the calcium, and so forth. Those are contained in the rubble. With the immersion time, it's being saturated for the sodium. And uh, uh, this is the immersion test with simulated rubble. Together with the passage of immersion time, you can see that uh, it's being saturated under a different uh, uh, temperature so that uh, the iron chloride uh, concentration change has not been that uh, eminent or prominent over the passage of time. So within the common tool, there has been a few included and looked uh, at uh, outside observation and looked at the oxide film because uh, within the pool a uh, fuel have been kept and we wanted to see the situation inside the uh, spent fuel pool. From number four, the fuel have been retrieved which will be put under analysis and this is a current situation. There are different uh, uh, types of uh, fuel difference in the type and the irradiation time and so forth. This is covered by the brown cladding and there was no particular corrosion found. Of course, in the past, uh, JNS had taken various different data and this red one is something we had taken this time. And this is the thickness of uh, film, oxide film, which was kept within the scope of uh, data. And this is what was done in the experiment. For example, uh, within the high temperature water immersion, we wanted to see the impact on the strength. And particularly, you no know, mark the difference in the strength. And this is a potential at the pore. And this is a spent ones, and this is a, a fresh ones. So with a spent fuel, with, uh, uh, we got to the uh, pitting corrosion, the performance is better. And of course, uh, there are so much varied doses improved, and this shows the impact from the gamba, 0, 0,500 and so forth per hour. 
And from the perspective of corrosion, there was almost uh, no influence from a gamba. So technology pertaining to the long-term integrity of the fuel assembly and so forth, uh, its research is to continue. And for this fiscal year, there are one F4, uh, which is uh, stored uh, at the common pool, and uh, oxide film uh, thickness will be measured, and also fuel corrosion progress uh, will be assessed. Now this is another study concerning method to process damaged fuel. Particularly, the fuel has been removed from the spent fuel pool, which will be contained in the common pool. So this is a procedure. Case study will be done both at home and abroad, and also the criteria will be found out and so forth. Just for example, reprocessing and criteria which will be concerned. The radioactive material leakage, mechanical strength might go down or impurity might be mixing up and so forth. And uh, maybe the canisters and reassembly can be made or the and the uh, canister container can be made and so forth, and uh, it involves uh, chemical processing, so corrosion might be a issue which need to be investigated, and uh, decision criteria will be formed as a result of that. This is the objective. For the impurity study of method of process damage, the fuel removed from a spent fuel plan and so forth. And for the vitrified uh, product will be made, what will be its behavior, and so forth, and the challenges uh, will be identified. And just for example, reprocessing and will be done after the removal of the fuel, which means uh, it will happen in far distant future. We are to preempt that, and the data will come out from the common pool going forward together with that of the fuel, so we will take a look at those data findings and uh, proceed with other researches. That's the plan. So this is a preparation related to retrieving a fuel debris, and uh, this is the remote decontamination. As shown here, once and twice, uh, first floor, second floor, and third floor, we are trying to get the data. The black one uh, is for the 2012 and uh, this was done in 2013. From lower floor, we went upper floor. Now only first floor, but uh, in higher elevated floor, the communication uh, will take place, and according to the equipment are being developed. On the floor of the first floor, remote decontamination is underway, and many robots have been uh, developed. As for this uh, robot, what was the idea is that during the fis last fiscal year for fiscal dining, the demonstration experiment uh, had taken place where challenges and problems have been identified and it, which have been optimized uh, to be operated on Fukushima Daiichi. It's very important to have a simulation. This is a dry house blast. Decontamination time can be improved and the blast thing time uh, can be improved and so forth, and the improvement can be made to enhance the safety. And around the view, camera was situated, it used to be four in total, but now we have nine units, and if you operate the camera, you see that the uh, field of view was found to be narrower than expected, so attempts have been made to widen it. This is the, another blast equipment. Operability has been uh, improved. And uh, it, this is an action machine, an absorption machine, and there is a hose which is connected to it. And for the Fukushima Daini, when the evaluation was done, there was a corner point about the post which tends to get dry. This is a base which can get stuck so that. Uh, distance of the caster underneath the uh, base uh, have been narrowed for the ease of uh, operation. 
So by and by, cumulatively, improvement is being made. And this is the results obtained thus far. This is a representative one for number one, southern side. So this is a number one unit, the first floor, particularly the yellow area, number 10. This area is where 1.6 seabelt per hour, which is very high. Why such a high dose? And by using the German camera, it was observed and it was found out that uh, in the piping area, we have found the area where those came out to be very high in the southern part where the high level contamination was found. It was due to the piping. Why was it? Because uh, as for this uh, piping at the time of the accident, uh, as a result of the bend, the uh, steam had gone through, steam vapor. Uh, well, that is exactly where the dose was found to be very high. That is because this is a control road, a replacement road is a rail is uh, located, and we like to use this rail to have an inside observation, but dosage is so high here, so it cannot be gone through from this area. So from the opposite side, attempt is made to look inside for the number one unit. We should have used the rail if it was possible. There was a big penetration through which many equipments can get through. This is a representative example as a result of the uh, decontamination. It determines and dictates what kind of uh, equipment can go through the penetration, what size and what shape and so forth. So this is a sampling case. At the time of body decontamination, both sample has to be taken because there is a, a raw concrete used and so forth, the concrete as they were, sometimes it's painted. Then sometimes uh, impurities and contaminants uh, are, are placed uh, on the surface of the concrete, or sometimes it penetrates inside the concrete. It depends, which means uh, it dictates the method to be used for decontamination. So core sampling is being taken at this time by using the robots and the sampling are being done. So what is being developed now is here. The seeding of the first floor and so forth, how to remotely decontaminate. Duct piping are there and support and electric articles and the cables are located in the seating part uh, where the vapor are attached or sometimes the radioactive materials are penetrated inside the uh, concrete uh, so that uh, there are so many properties being mixed together and uh, research is being done to bring those up near to the seating. So this is a program to be conducted this fiscal year. Many instruments are being developed. That's the main work. And one more important challenge to be addressed is number one, gathering basic data on contamination conditions and adjusting decontamination technology and studying concept of our decontamination. Because uh, ice wall and frozen wall is being uh, built, then the buildings of water as a level have to be lowered accordingly. Then all those which have been immersed under the water uh, will be exposed to the atmosphere. So which makes a different uh, the decontamination method going on for the building because what was immersed under the water will be exposed so that there will be a dust issue and so forth, and additional issues are to be coming out. So we like to address them in advance, knowing that all these uh, problems are to appear, so that in case of uh, a dry up, integrity can be maintained. Next is about development of technologies for investigation and repair for the feeding PCV with water. Now, uh, for that purpose, what we have to do is uh, hire a su suppression chamber, vent pipe, and also dry well, and outside of that, on various locations, what needs to be repaired, that has to be identified, and also investigation and repair technology for that have to be developed. For example, 
Uh, this is the current situation. First of all, I want to show you that. This is unit number one. This shows the current status for lower part of PCB. Unit one uh, has a water depth of uh, three meters. And it is said that there is a debris there. And uh, the water is filled in this way. And based on the results of research so far, this number one, this is a vacuum break line uh, below uh, is shown number two here. This is a, a water boat and from two uh, sand cushion drain, uh, water is leaking. This is only a guess for us. The water is leaking here. That means that uh, this section above there uh, is damaged. So that is highly possible. Therefore, uh, this is a very big problem because if this is damaged, then one possibility uh, is that shell attack has happened. So the uh, debris in the uh, PCV is doing something bad to this. So we have to take that into consideration for investigation. Next, this is unit number two, uh, vent by a sleeve and sound cushion uh, drain and bellows. And uh, we have a four-leg robot developed by Toshiba, and the leakage has not been detected. So this is very different from Unit 1. But however, on the other hand, again, under the uh, project uh, supported by the government, we have come up with this technology to uh, gauge the uh, water level of suppression chamber. And the water level there and water level in Taurus room is about the same. What that means is at the bottom, uh, there could be a hole. So now, not only there, but also there is a pump uh, room and there are other pipings here. And that has to be considered as well when we uh, conduct investigation. So this is different from uh, Unit 1. So next one is number 3, Unit 3. And uh, uh, TEPCO conducted a survey regarding main steam isolation valve. And from uh, VELOS, uh, there was a leakage that was confirmed. 6.5 meter is a water uh, depth, so this is quite deep. So we haven't uh, seen this directly, but I think uh, there is no problem here. Unlike number one and number two, number three is so different. So the situation varies. Depending on the different situation, the way we investigate and also uh, repair uh, could be different. This shows the development of investigation uh, equipment. There are many kind of equipments. For example, this is suppression chamber at bottom, a magnet is used for robot, and also a vent pipe, dry well joint. This is very narrow space, so uh, this can go into that narrow area. So this is what we are developing now. So conducting such experiment, uh, this is an IRID member manufacturer uh, factory is making a mock-up uh, like this so that we can uh, verify whether robots are functional. And also, there are other types of robots being developed. One is a horizontal floor removing equipment. This is on the side of Taurus room. In order to see that, this is at the bottom of Taurus. This robot runs there. And also, underwater swimming equipment and also suppression chamber uh, top area. This is uh, estimated uh, there is a leakage there. So, a uh, vertical uh, moving robot is being uh, and also a uh, dry wall outside. We have uh, pipes there, and the robot will be used to investigate that area as well. Development is now underway. And also, uh, the CRDM uh, macaroni piping, and uh, here uh, there could be a leakage. We have to investigate that. This is a very uh, small. Uh, space and the device down here can go in this small space and it goes uh, deep into that to check whether there is a leakage. Developing such a device and also we have to come up with a conceptual idea. This is a manipulator being developed by NEDO and so this manipulator is to be used to uh, move a robot forward in this small space.
Now, regarding repair technology, uh, top part and bottom part, and also hatch. And first, let me talk about the bottom area. And as I said earlier, suppression chamber is mentioned here. This is a vent pipe. And here, in the case of Unit 2, there could be a hole to repair this. That's highly challenging because this is a high-level radioactive area. So it's very difficult uh, task. So the biggest candidate right now is to use this vent, uh, vent pipe to stop water leakage. And above that, we create a boundary and fill the system with water. And grouting will be done here mainly. And if we do grouting, it's a kind of cement. And uh, naturally, that water is flowing. And there we are going to create grouting. And usually water penetrates. So we have to make sure that uh, water stops there. That is to say, Firstly, this is an uh, element test uh, auxiliary uh, material, and uh, we create a hole there. It's like an automobile airbag uh, mechanism, you can imagine that. And we uh, blow it up, and gloves will be inserted there uh, precisely. That is one possible uh, approach being developed now. And also, this, we have pipes here different types of piping, SLC-related uh, pipes there. And we have pipes down to this level. There we have to close that. So at the bottom, uh, quencher uh, bottom, we are going to insert stopping water material. Uh, and grouting will be done too. So grout and boundary will be created anew, and we are collecting data for that. Having said that, water has to be stopped, leakage has to be stopped, and technologies are being developed for that. And grout uh, has to be solidified uh, quickly, so uh, quickly acting grout, and also with long durability uh, is needed. That said, 100% water stopping we do not know if that is possible. Therefore, even if there is a waterway, and uh, we have to create also a system to collect water, so we have to develop a system as a package of various technologies and devices. Of course, we have element technologies. However, take water stoppage uh, example. Uh, we have various uh, necessary technologies all together, so we have to develop a possible scenario. This is a, a top part. Penetration, 100 or 200 penetrations exist. For important ones, without conducting a, a examination, we are going to fill it with grout. And also, uh, in small chambers, we have many, many uh, devices. And when there is a, a leakage, we cannot afford to go into that room uh, to uh, repair because of the radiation. Therefore, uh, for each room, we are going to fill that with water. So we are going to stop uh, water there and uh, submerge it. So again, this year too, we will be active in developing. Now regarding the uh, inside PCV investigation, the, before we uh, remove uh, debris, we have to understand the situation inside the PCV. Firstly, uh, investigation and method and device is shown. Unit 1. Regarding Unit 1, the almost all of uh, molten fuel have fallen down to the bottom of RPB. So uh, there is little uh, fuel remaining in the core. That is estimated according to our research. Therefore, development plan is such that uh, fuel debris exists even outside of the pedestal. Therefore, we give uh, priority to outside the pedestal investigation because in Unit 1, I talked about suppression chamber earlier. Shell attack has happened, perhaps. I said that. Shell attack in Unit 1 is something like this. Debris it may exist around here. So within pedestal, uh, most of the uh, fuel uh, is contained. However, there are some fuel which has penetrated outside to the pedestal. That's the difference between Unit 1 and 2 and 3. So, for example, if we are to remove fuel debris from the top, then 
we have to open up the uh, lid and we have to access. If debris is outside the pedestal, we can't uh, reach it. Therefore, we have to consider opening the uh, side area. It's very unique. So outside the pedestal, we would like to see the current situation. That is number one. Regarding unit two and two, three, like this, uh, some fuel remain RPV. However, most of them have fallen to the bottom of RPV. However, in uh, unit three, we presume that more fuel than we have expected have fallen down to the PCV. Therefore, in the case of unit two, uh, there is a possibility, we cannot deny the possibility of fuel has gone out of the outside of the uh, pedestal. However, uh, pedestal inside investigation should be prioritized for Unit 2. So Unit 2 inside, Unit 1 outside the pedestal, that is a priority. So if we develop technology for inside as well as outside, we'll be able to use the technology mutually between the two units. Number 3 unit, uh, PCV. Uh, water level is high. As I said, uh, water uh, is abundant there. Therefore, we want to look uh, we want to use a penetration for investigation inside. However, that penetration could be underwater. Uh, therefore, uh, we are not able to use the same technology as other units. Therefore, depending on the uh, situation of each unit, we have to come up with different investigation methods. For example, unit number one. Firstly, X6 penetration is something we want to use uh, in relation to decontamination. I talked about this. However, radiation level is high. Therefore, on the opposite side, we have a X100B. X100B penetration, the diameter is only 10 centimeters. It's very small a diameter. Uh, using this penetration, we go down to the pedestal outside, uh, first floor grating, and then we go down to the basement to carry out investigation. Based on the result of that, uh, we, of course, we have to uh, think of the reducing radiation on the X6 side, but uh, eventually we want to use X6 penetration. Now, a 10 centimeter diameter I talked about. So this is it. Uh, diameter is very small. Therefore, the traveling through piping type uh, equipment will be used. So uh, this is a shape uh, changing uh, robot and uh, it can also travel on grating as well. So the shape can be changed and also cameras are mounted. And again, and uh, if we go down lower floors, lower floors are perhaps submerged. Therefore, we have to use the system not only in the air but also in the water. So as I said, this is a, a crawler equipment that is being uh, developed and we want to uh, access a basement as well. Now, Unit 2. Unit 2, uh, we are going to use a replacement rail for the uh, control rod and we come down here and in CRD, curvature and platform status will be investigated and at uh, two years time we go down to the basement to see the location of debris. Now, in conjunction with such technology development, we need to measure fuel debris. So uh, we have to develop the analyzers uh, of uh, position and distribution of fuel debris. We are going to use an optical cutting method to uh, analyze the position and distribution of the debris. In addition, on temperature and dose measurement, and also component uh, measurement are ideal. So we are trying to come up with uh, equipment to be able to do that. However, in that sense, measurement performance and resistance to radioactivity in foggy atmosphere, raindrop containing atmosphere in water uh, has to be ensured and also small and lightweight uh, equipment is very important. As I said, the accessible holes are very small. So such a, a small size is the key point. Next, I'm going to talk about the investigation inside the RPB. Now, 
I talked about inside the PCB, but、uh, this time inside the RPB investigation. More、uh, access route that we have considered is shown here. For example, access via drilling hole on the upper section of RPB or the access after RPB opened. And also access through piping systems. These are the candidates. However, here I want to talk about access、uh, via upper section of RPB as、uh, an example. And the, within this uh, uh, RPV, uh, there is a、uh, main steam、uh, valve, and we have to、uh, make a hole in it. And also, the hole, and then a tube has to be expanded. And that has to be done remotely. That means boundary has to be、uh, formed. Therefore, on the operation floor, seed plug、uh, boundary creation is a challenge. And this is one example、uh, from the top access route approaches. And maybe this route is possible. And we have several routes、uh, possible. We have considered that. Regarding piping, We have a core spray and feed water system, and also jet pump instrumentation piping. So, through these pipes, we want to see inside. However, this is again very challenging because the big diameter pipe also h a v e a, a partition inside. So, a snake type robot can be used according to some. However, that partition has to be broke through, broken through. Therefore, how are we going to access that? And also, the system piping,、uh, usually there are、uh, bar, valves outside, therefore, it's easy to access. However, inside there could be a、uh, uh, The branching out of the、uh, pipe. So, if we can use a fiber scope or something, it seems easy, but、uh, inside it's a totally dark dome like shape. Therefore, if you use a high fiber spo- scope, you can't、uh, secure the vision. Therefore, realistically, it is difficult. So, these are the challenges we are facing. The basic concept is being、uh, studied now. And going forward, we are going to collect expertise from abroad and、uh, inside Japan too. Next is a upgrading accident、uh, uh, progression analysis. It's like a map and Samson. Map and Samson, and also the heat flow analysis will be used, and the OECD NEA benchmark analysis will be using this as well. So, AESJ, Severe Accident Assessment Research Expert Committee,、uh, will be sharing our data as well. This is a map example. Improvement points. Gradually, the height is increasing.、Uh, we had a single transfer path, but it is going to be multiple paths. And also, debris,、uh, uniform、uh, debris deposit was the、uh, assumption now. However, a symmetrical、uh, distribution has to be considered. And also, debris、uh, below the PCV bottom,、uh, the、uh, behavior has to be、uh, considered or modeled. So, multiple path, what does that mean?、Uh, this is a fuel assembly. Fuel assembly here. Is placed on the support here, metal support. As an additional route,、uh, debris could have fallen into this hole or the、uh, cross section of the、uh, fuel assembly. That means、uh, fuel debris has fallen through this. Therefore, debris path is、uh, complicated. So that is、uh, put into consideration. And Sapsum? This is a physical model. The、uh, flow route of the lower p r e n u m and the、uh, modeling of the interaction between multi materials and structures. And also, on a high temperature situation before C ion oxidation reaction was added. And so, and so models were added. And these are a result of analysis. MAP and Samson results for Unit 1. 
uh, I want you to look at both. The results of MAP. In Unit 1, fuel has fallen on the PCB and on the floor of a dry well outside the pedestal. And this is a result of Samson. In case of Samson, uh, 72 tons remaining on the reactor core and uh, the remaining is on pedestal floor. So the result is quite different between the two. But basically the same uh, is that quite a lot is on the pedestal floor. And as you can see, such analysis code to do uh, PCV uh, and RPV uh, internal investigations, there must be a feedback done to further develop and evolve the code. On the other hand, for those who are engaged in the key developments, where uh, are they falling? They want to know the analysis code. So this is a relationship of chicken or egg. So both was, has to provide the latest data and exchange information to raise the accuracy. We are now going through that process right now. And as a result, OECD NEA uh, BSAP project, we are sharing information with the world. Because this uh, analysis model is not limited only for Fukushima, but the self-analysis of uh, nuclear power, these are used as a code for such analysis, so all international organizations are interested in this. And next is development of technologies to detect fuel debris. I talked about internal investigation, that there are many cameras used, and the the situation is different from place to place, but we studied uh, ways of making it more simple. Here, this is the muon use uh, space rays to see uh, the situation debris inside uh, the reactor. Inside the PCV or at the lower part, and what is covered here is inside the RPV and the lower part of PCV. These are areas to be observed. In Muon, there are several technologies available, but the main technologies are these two. One is a permeation method. The subject to be measured, the Muon element, there's one Muon electron, and it detects, uh, it provides 2D information on uh, presence of matters, but identifiability is about one meter. But with one small size muon detector, you can uh, make the detection, so it is possible to apply early. And the scattering method is another method. There are two screens like this, and when the muon passes, here is uranium and plutonium. If something's heavier than that, then the scattering angle changes, and that change of scattering angle is measured. This provides a 3D information, and with identifying ability of 30 centimeters, so it's more accurate. But the two large size muons detectors become necessary. This is the latest muon permeation method. Which was measured at the Japan Atomic Power Company, Toka Number 2 nuclear plant. And as a result of the analysis, there is no fuel in the reactor, and the blue part is a fuel pool. Uh, it shows that there is fuel in the pool. Uh, this is a 2D information provided. In Unit 1, we thought there was no fuel at all, but if that is the case, we want to know if there is there's really no fuel. So we want to be able to apply this technology as soon as possible. And currently, the plan is it is still a plan, but by the end of this year, we hope we can have this data available. And the other muon scattering method at Los Alamos, DOE Los Alamos, this technology was developed, and Toshiba uh, improved this technology to practical use. This is Toshiba's uh, experimental reactor. And this is a one-tenth of a scale of Fukushima Daiichi, and the value matched within 3%, and the identifiability is 30 centimeters. This is the image. There will be two. So one is outside the building, and the other is in the turbine building. And by doing so, here 
in the, the building here this is the elevation of the floor so, and this is the basement and the PCV we want to see how it's the situation of the floor of a PCV, but this is underground, so we cannot catch the information. In the current situation, uh, at the lower part of, a, of RPV and the uh, control rod drive mechanism, we want to get data from there. If we can get that data soon, the remaining will be about PCV. And in that sense, the scope of inspection and the method of uh, removal, we can get uh, data earlier for that purpose. And in next, by the end of next year, we hope we can get this data. We are preparing so that we can do that. This is Unit 2, and these are results of simulation. Fuel debris, this is a simulation. But we're 100% uh, core molten. This is a result. Uh, and but to do that, for example, 50% data. The day of permission, the space ray comes in naturally. So just like photographs, as time passes, the data is more clear. This is 150 days. So currently, at least three months. If we can have time, uh, six months, but at least three months is necessary to do this, to collect the data. But as I have mentioned, it is just uh, next to the building. So outside the building, other works will be starting, like the water shield and also many other work, to ch like exchange of a cover as a spent fuel pool. So we must make adjustments of a schedule with other work so that we can get the data on a timely manner. And next is the development of container and transfer storage technology. At uh, TMI, there were exclusive canisters developed to use for fuel debris packing, transfer and storage. And uh, uh, a work block was installed on top of RPV and fuel debris was packed in a canister. And in case of TMI, how was the fuel uh, retrieved and stored? After retrieving, how uh, transfer storage was done? In this case, this is a TMI, a transfer of fuel debris, and this is a storage. And this is a case of packs in Hungary. And this is a case of France uh, transfer damage of fuel. So there are different methods. For example, in TMI, fuel debris transfer, this was a semi-dry method. And uh, storage was dry. And uh, PAX is a wet method. And in France, the dry method. So depending on the situation, there are different ways of doing. And depending on the, the method, there are technological challenges that should be considered. We are now sorting out these issues. In case of Kushima Daiichi, how, uh, what kind of storage canister should be designed is under study. After removing of debris, you may say this is something of the future. But actually, this should be studied earlier because in case of Kushima Daiichi, compared to TMI, there was three times more fuel so it means that we need much more casks. So can we re really store that fuel, is the question. In case of Kushima Daiichi, what method of storage is necessary? We call it an end state. We must think of an end state. And then, what is the design of a storage canister to do for that purpose? And what is the volume that should be removed? should be retrieved, we must start thinking from the end state and uh, uh, think backwards. In the technological development, the situation becomes more complicated. And as for the storage system, there is a wet system, the pool system, or the metal cask, a dry system, a concrete shielding, and the vault. There are different methods. And which is the most appropriate is now under study. And next is the characteristics uh, understanding by using simulator fuel debris. So we are talking about uh, retrieving debris. So what is debris? Unless we know that, 
the tools to be used or the criticality uh, and the measurement method or the storage method is unknown. So we have to know, first of all, what are the debris? For example, these is analyze the characteristics of the fuel debris. Perhaps this may be the type of debris. And what this is? It is a metallic compound, a melted fuel with a, a, a zirconium and uranium alloy and oxide, or there may be pellets, or B4C, the control material uh, borate could also be included, and also if it is, has fall to the PCV, concrete may also be mixed. It's a very complex state. And mechanical uh, property and uh, thermal property, all these physical properties should be understood. This is not only a matter of retrieval, but this will impact the method of storage. So we are making a simulated debris. And the debris, depending on the situation, Depending on the storage situation, what is necessary? What are the points of view that should be considered? Like, is, is there water content? What happens when uh, it generates hydrogen, if it generates heat? We are now taking the basic data right now. And about the simulated debris, TMI cases and other severe accident cases were studied, and we also uh, studying the situation of Fukushima as well to select the few debris whose characteristics are to be analyzed. And MCCI is when the reaction with a concrete. And what is the characteristics of that is now also being studied. CA of France, we are jointly working with them to collect data. And we are also comparing the TMI to debris. understands that uh, Jay has a uh, debris being uh, stored uh, of a size of a fist, so we would like to be able to analyze that, and we would like to collect data in this method. So we are now making different types of simulated debris, and so far, the result of a simulated debris analysis the, the horizontal axis is the hardness, and this is metal and oxide and ceramics. We could imagine that, but what was difficult is a boride. It is extremely harder. So we must think well about it in designing the equipment. For your information, one difficult thing is, as Mr. Barrett is here, you might be familiar with this, in case of TMI. Metals and ceramics got together, and then uh, there were uh, metals with high toughness and hard but fragile oxide causing uh, difficulties in crushing and cutting. We were concerned about it. In case of TMI, uh, iron was not melted uh, because it did not melt to the RPV, but in our case, uh, iron is mixed. In case of TMI, uh, we can imagine that it is hardened. And in that case, instead, if it is an even mixture of ceramics and metal, for example, then technology might be very challenging by making uneven compounds. We are now trying to make a we are trying to evaluate uh, the specimen by having a metal ceramic molten solidified substance in Kazakhstan there is an equipment to do this we are using that we want to use that equipment and use a real uranium for example to do a, a falling test and uh, fit that the back in the design of the equipment and this is criticality management Criticality management and integrity evaluation, as I've mentioned, that's related to the stability on site. In, in terms of criticality, we believe that currently fuel debris has not reached criticality, but after uh, removing the situation of criticality, uh, we've had to prevent the recriticality even if fuel debris shape or water quantity changes. So monitoring is necessary. 
And a basic concept is that inside the PCV and outside, the requirement of criticality control is different. Subcriticality monitoring or recriticality monitoring, which is necessary. For example, outside the PCV, to do the maintenance in such a case, uh, that may cause exposure to the workers. So we must prevent exposure, so there must be a subcriticality monitoring. But inside uh, the PCV and PV, what's the situation of the uh, debris? Uh, what's the situation of water? In this case, uh, there's no direct exposure. If people would do not, uh, is not going in, there's low possibility of exposure. So in that case, recriticality detection is necessary. Then, for example, in terms of recriticality, uh, uh, we are now developing a recriticality detection system using neutron. And also, gamma ray, FP gamma ray uh, recriticality detection system is already being used on site, but uh, we want to develop something with a higher accuracy. So, uh, in addition to Zen and Krypton and other uh, materials are not being considered. And in monitoring criticality, one more thing is that uh, can't we prevent criticality? That may be another question. And so use a soluble neutron absorbent. In, this is a PWR in case of TMI, so they had borrowing inside. But in case of BWR, there is no ball run. So this sounds easy, but in reality, it is quite difficult because uh, so pure water was supposed to be used, so uh, tolerance of material is necessary. If there is water with boron, a large amount of boron is necessary. If you are to process that, a lot of waste will be generated. So there are many challenges to be considered. But of course, we must think of this possibility. Another is uh, insoluble neutron absorbent. Uh, in the retrieval, this would be used whether uh, there is criticality or not. Uh, by using this method and at a situation th uh, that does not cause criticality, it is possible, it may be possible to retrieve. This is one example. Uh, B4C or uh, glass material, uh, the for solid and for liquid, uh, grout and glass, or B4C gel material, or slurry, could be used. And by, so we are now also developing criticality prevention technology using these methods. Next is assessing structural integrity of RPV and PCV. The purpose is after a severe accident, RPV, PCV, pedestrian, uh, to get uh, quantitative data on corrosion rate. There is sea water injected, so uh, corrosion may gradually proceed. But for, to be prepared against the future possible earthquakes, we have to evaluate to whether this is tolerant or not. Is this a flow of integrity assessment to analyze the building behavior and after making analysis? We must uh, sort out the loading conditions, and at that state, we must consider corrosion. Uh, corrosion wall thinning may happen, and the result of that and high temperature strength deterioration, uh, such information could be used to uh, measure the uh, tolerance against earthquake, and depending on that, we must consider what areas should be repaired. And currently, what happens about corrosion inhibition? Currently, the water is denitrated and we use sodium nitrate. And there are corrosion inhibition measures in place. But after, with a retrieval of debris, the lead of the uh, RPV will be removed, then the air will come in. So with gas, and to remove uh, gas, there's no meaning. So what should be developed by then is to have some 
uh, things like sodium nitrate to avoid corrosion. And we have had results that we can avoid corrosion by this. And about uh, evaluating as seismic strength, 1F, 1, 2, and 3, there are different cases, current situation, a future case, and the situation in 20 years. There are different cases assumed. These are case studies. And when water is added under these conditions, or if at the upper type there is a cell for retrieval of 5,000 tons, for example, what will happen? These are the evaluations made. And looking at the result, the RPV integrity, this is a result in 10 years. Uh, stress generated at all portions assessed was equal or lower than the allowable stress. For PCV as well, it is generally all right, but in some parts, for instance, a column support of the uh, suppression chamber, uh, it is above one. So, of course, we must raise the calculation accuracy. And also, another idea is to uh, make um, uh, improvements. And for the suppression chamber, uh, we must also think about stopping the water of a turbine building. Then we could bury the column support and also to enhance the anti-seismic strength. And if you try to do that, I talked about the grout earlier. But this requirement, this area is has a very high volume, and in the grout could lead to immediate results, but in this case, it's a grout uh, with high liquidity that is necessary. So depending on the place that is used, uh, different types of grouts will be required. And in doing this, we, do, we should do a mock-up to do the test. But now at J, at Naraha, a mock-up test facility is now being constructed, and this will be made there and the vent tube or the grout and together with that a torus grout uh, to be strengthened all these uh, mock-up studies are scheduled this is a pedestal of RPV currently there are no major problems but these also the molten debris may be causing corrosion, but that's not to be taken into consideration. Going forward, we, by looking at the inner side, this evaluation may change. And lastly, about uh, the debris retrieval. Uh, to go on with the submersion method, we must pick up the samples of a few debris and analyze the characteristics and study the retrieval method. In the submersion method, first the, the RPV and PCV leads and the structure inside should be uh, taken out and install a retrieval equipment. And from this equipment, the manipulator will go down and a special tool will be used to cut and collect the debris and uh, transfer to a storage equipment. We can expect uh, shielding with water and the dust will not go out. Thus, this can limit the exposure of the workers. A similar method was applied during the accident of a Three Mile Island Unit 2 in USA in 1979. However, in case of Fukushima, the level of damage is high, so it may not be able to stop the water well, and it may not be possible to fully cover the field debris. And in such a case, innovative approaches could be considered, like without using the water and do the work in the air, and also take approaches not only from the top, but also from the side. And I read, from uh, December 2013 to January 2014, IRID has sent an RPI for the alternative method. As a result, there were 200 information. 
received. So having said so, this year we are, we start, we are starting with the fuel debris retrieval technology development. There are many things that we have to consider. First, one is to study the scenario. In case of subversion method, what are the methods and what are the challenges? And in case of doing this in air, what are the challenges? We must sort out all those questions. That is the target for this year. However, as common technology, whether it is in air or in water, there are common technologies like a cutting fuel debris, remote operation, prevention of contamination, shielding, criticality prevention. These are common technologies, so we'd like to start this year. But we must first consider the comprehensive scenario. RFI was already discussed earlier, so let me just briefly introduce. For example, in cutting the fuel debris, it, it, there are many uh, ideas about using laser, but when it is very hard, it may be difficult to do it mechanically. And this is a very internal investigation. One thing I found interesting is it's difficult to see the inside from the top. So from the spent fuel pool, a hole could be made to see the inside. A DS pit could also be used for that purpose. These are some of the ideas proposed. And also the vent. This is a hole made here. So one idea is to put a sensor from here. And in the retrieval, a method from retrieving from the top, and from the top, these are 35 meters. Uh, so uh, one idea is to retrieve from a, a lower stage or from the side. There are different ideas provided. So from the 27th of June, uh, MRI is processing the RFP. A few debris investigation team of IRID is performing technical support. So this was a general uh, story. I have made an overall uh, presentation, but as, as you can see, I have introduced individual technology, but they're all interrelated, input and output. Each technology, what is necessary and what is the output. This is very complicated, but in IRID we are now sorting out. And what is more important is that this is a general concept, but also how is that compatible with a roadmap. This is also now under study. Uh, the RPV internal investigation to do from the top, for example. But if you are going to use the top, what it means is that the operation floor must be open. However, as you know, spent fuel should be retrieved first. After retrie So that can be done only after retrieving the spent fuel. So there are time limitations. So we must consider the schedule and the input output. So it's, as a strategy, it's extremely important. And lastly, at Fukushima Daiichi, retrieving fuel debris is expected to be very difficult. So a general strategy and the fuel debris retrieving technology development is necessary. Recently, I was wondering how to talk about the wisdom between in Japan and overseas. And I checked that on my smartphone, and then I found the English term I read. So it means that I read, which means knowledge or wisdom from Japan and overseas. This is already a widespread uh, expression. And also to retrieve fuel debris, necessary to make a plan which is best suited for the entire related project. It should not be su best suited for only a part. Waste is one of the major examples in the UK. And NDA, for example, waste... Uh, Processing is a first priority, and based on that, they are developing other technologies. And to formulate a strategy, we must think of end stage and think of a feasible options as a result. Not only the f uh, first idea, but we must also prepare alternatives. This morning, uh, Mr. Barrett introduced uh, the TMI experience, not only about technology, but what should be considered, what is the strategy necessary he talked about management, which is very informative. 
So including that, uh, to collect knowledge from Japan and overseas, you must uh, be able to do that to develop future technology. Thank you very much for your kind attention.